Hi, I'm Christina McGoldrick with this week in Santa Clarita. 2009 was a big year for the show, and today we're going to take a look back at some of the highlights. Let's start off with Hit the Trail, which served as the official kickoff point to the countdown for the Amgen Tour of California. I started out up at Valencia High School. We rode north to Copper Hill and then back down uh, along uh, McBean Parkway, the trail there along the river. Uh, had to go through the torrential rain and the, and the wind. I made it. I'm cold right now. I'm, I'm ready to go home, put some dry clothes on. But we had a great turnout, and it shows just how much people support Santa Clarita, especially the great trail system we have here. The Amgen Tour of California traveled through Santa Clarita on February 21st, making a stop in the city for the third consecutive year. The tour served as Lance Armstrong's official return to American professional cycling, and thousands of spectators flooded the Westfield Valencia Town Center to witness the Stage 7 start and catch a glimpse of the world-class cyclists participating in the event. Earlier this year, This Week in Santa Clarita began a series of segments highlighting One Valley, One Vision, the city and county joint general plan endeavor designed to address local development. Santa Clarita Director of Community Development, Paul Brotsman, made an appearance on the show to talk about the program. Uh, so the plan looks at everything from land use issues to public safety issues, seismic, earthquake, emergency preparedness, park and recreation, open space preservation, uh, transportation and circulation. And it makes sure that the policies and the decisions that we make in any one of those areas is consistent with the policies and decisions that we make in the, in the other areas. This week in Santa Clarita also covered the arrival of the AT&T Champions Classic held at the Valencia Country Club. Correspondent Evan Thomason was on hand to discuss the event. People who've grown up with golf, this is their opportunity to shake hands, get autographs, um, get behind the ropes with some of these really all-time great golfers. Um, and really, that's what this community has really come to appreciate about this tournament is that they're, they're really friendly. They really love golf. They've done this for decades, and they're fantastic. Right, and I think you've been to and I've been to uh, PGA events before, and they're they're obviously a lot of fun. It's a little bit different vibe, and it's so crowded, and there's so many you know big names in the Tiger Woods. It's kind of hard to get close to them, but this really is a fan-friendly experience, isn't it? It absolutely is. Uh, you you still get the fans, and we still get the crowds, and you still you don't miss out on that excitement at all. However, you still have the opportunity to shake a hand, uh, to meet your favorite player, to get behind the ropes. It's it's not as protected as maybe the Tiger phenomenon would be. So uh, it's a little more personal, and I think people really appreciate that. One of the biggest Santa Clarita projects in 2009 was the opening of the new city skate park. This week in Santa Clarita was on hand from the park's construction to its highly anticipated grand opening. Let's take a look. This skate park is a little more than four times the size of our old one. Uh, one of the features that, did, well, there's a lot of features this park has that the old one didn't. Um, these bowls obviously are part of that. These are a lot bigger and a lot more expansive than our old bowl system. We've got snake runs and transitions. We have our bridge element with a half pipe. Um, we have, you know, shade structures and landscape and it's lit. It, we have sports field type of lighting out here, so it'll be lit really well for night use. Uh, it just leaps and bounds ahead of our old skate park. Three, two, one, skateboard park! The City Council joined hundreds of skaters from across the country on March 27th as they cut the ribbon officially opening the city's new skate park to the public. Mayor Ferry explained how the new skate park highlights the city's commitment to local youth. You have a skateboard park where it has the ability of a small five, six year old kid just beginning to be able to come out here and have a blast. Also joined right next to him by these professional skaters who are in large bowls. It's exciting. People need to come out and see what a great success it is. Local youth and pro skaters in attendance at the event expressed their enthusiasm for the new state of the art skate park. It's pretty cool and all. I like it. It's like more space, but it's just a lot of people right now today. I really like the five step a lot. It's like really fun. Right on the heels of the skate park grand opening was the annual Cowboy Festival. This week in Santa Clarita got a first hand account of the popular community event. This year's Cowboy Festival, held Saturday, April 25th and Sunday, April 26th at Melody Ranch Motion Picture Studio, featured classic festival fare like cowboy coffee, tri-tip sandwiches, and award-winning Dutch oven peach cobbler made fresh by the Cowboy Cultural Committee. Guests enjoyed authentic cowboy food and watched cowboy poets like Baxter Black, 
Gary Robertson, and more spin stories of the Old West. Attendees of this year's festival also had a full list of live musical performances to enjoy, ranging from the hilarious Sourdough Slim to the ever-popular Hot Club of Cowtown, who brought their swing sound back to the Cowboy Festival once again. In addition to these returning festival favorites, new attractions were added to the bill for this year's Cowboy Festival. Families brought their children out to enjoy expanded kids' activities like living history exhibits, Sky Shivers edutainment area, and the brand new Buckaroo Bookshop, which featured titles for all ages as well as author readings and signings. Multicultural attractions were also added to the 2009 Cowboy Festival, allowing attendees to get a glimpse of the dynamic background of the Old West. Native American music and dancers, Valley Folklorico, and more took the festival's heritage stage, and the new Buffalo Soldiers set up camp on Main Street giving onlookers a look back at the contributions of courageous black men who served as soldiers on the American Western frontier. The city also celebrated its first ever Earth Day Festival and Arbor Day celebration in 2009, and this week in Santa Clarita headed over to Central Park to cover it. Well, we got uh, two stages of entertainment, which is really awesome. We have a main stage that features uh, local indie acts, as well as we had a contest, which was really cool, a singer-songwriter contest, so they'll be performing later today. We actually had two winners. Uh, we also have a children's stage with a bunch of fun stuff for that. And then we have a workshop tent where people can come in and learn about how to compost or, or how to take care of their bicycle, all different sort of things. The wonderful thing about Earth Day, adding it to the existing Arbor Day, is the Earth obviously covers everything. So we've got things out here from the community. Um, we have mulch, we have free trees, we have people who provide uh, energy uh, products. We have uh, green cars, including uh, Tesla, which is a beautiful little car that's, I guess, about $80,000. So we're excited to that, have that out here. Um, and just a bunch of activity. And obviously, it's a great day. We got lucky on the weather, not too hot, and it's beautiful, and a, a really great turnout for our first event, especially. And it's something that, obviously, with the times and, and over the last few years, uh, Earth Control concerns, eco-concerns have really raised on the agenda and we felt it was time to really recognize that and, and do our own Earth Day event and it, the response has been amazing. So we're really happy that we uh, took that step and we want to thank particularly our urban forestry friends for letting us partner with them to put on this great event. What makes uh, Santa Clarita's Earth Day Festival different than other Earth Day festivals going on? Well, one of it is the, our location. We're somewhat isolated being in our own valley up here, so even though there are some Earth Day events happening in Santa Barbara, down in San Fernando Valley, and down in L.A., for our local constituents, it's really hard for them to get to those events. So it made sense for us to, to bring some of those vendors that may be coming from other communities in here to share what they do, and also to spotlight some of our local vendors that really have taken on the eco-challenges and are creating uh, creating very wonderful solutions to the challenges of, of, of being green and, and, be, and doing things that are, are taking care of the earth instead of just uh, ruining it for a next generation. In addition to hosting several city events, Santa Clarita also served as a site for the Western States Police and Fire Games this year. We caught up with Economic Development Associate Jessica Forty to find out more. This was a big regional effort actually um, on behalf of the Western States Games, but here within the city of Santa Clarita, like you mentioned, we have got events going on at Central Park, um, also over at the ice station, um, Paseo Club things were going on at Bridgeport Park, our trails all over our 30 plus miles of trails. We've had time trials, we've had a marathon on our streets, um, the community center, and then even the private venues like Santa Clarita Studios, which is hosting boxing all week long. The city also unveiled a new gadget this year to help keep city streets and the Santa Clara River in top form. Let's find out more. Right now you're looking at the old piece of equipment that was used to clean out the city's storm drains. And I am joined now with Scott Hamilton, the uh, environmental services supervisor, in front of the new piece of equipment that will be used to clean the city's storm drains. Scott, thanks for joining us. Tell us what we're, what we're standing in front of. Well, this is a state-of-the-art uh, vector truck uh, we bought from Hayaker Equipment. It's a CNG, it holds 1,250 gallons of clean water, it has a capability of 2,000 gallons in the debris tank. How many storm drains do we have and what's our responsibility in terms of cleaning them? It varies. We have over 350 drains that we currently clean. Uh, every, day, every month there's some gets transferred and some don't. Okay. We get new ones, we transfer out old ones. So it varies, so usually around 350 there, 350 drains. So this, this truck literally pulls up to a storm drain and you attach a hose and what happens from there? Uh, basically, you stick the hose in the, in the drain, you turn on the piece of equipment, uh, it sucks it out in about 10 minutes, we completely clean the drain. 
Uh, the old one used to take about 35 minutes, so it's more efficient. Um, we can do more drains for a longer period of time without having to dump. Uh, so it's, a, it's actually a very good uh, piece of equipment to add to our addition. Continuing its commitment to community safety, the City of Santa Clarita launched a motorcycle safety campaign in 2009. We checked in with local sheriff's department to find out more about the program. Hi, I'm Evan Thomason for This Week in Santa Clarita. In 2008, the City of Santa Clarita reported over 50 traffic collisions involving motorcycles. Of these collisions, over 10% involved fatalities, while the others resulted in critical injuries. Recently, I caught up with two sheriffs from the Santa Clarita Sheriff's Station to talk about the importance of motorcycle safety. For a new rider, somebody who's never ridden before, or even somebody experienced, the most important thing is to take a, a motorcycle safety foundation course um, and continue that. You know, just because you've been riding for several years doesn't mean that you, you know it all. You know, eventually it's going to catch up to them. If you're out there riding beyond your means, trying to do stunts, wheelies, stoppies, all the kind of things that stunt riders do, eventually you're going to have an accident. Uh, hopefully you don't hurt some innocent person who's just trying to go to work, taking their kid to school. But eventually you're going to have an accident. Uh, that's a recipe for disaster. We ride these things every day. We're trained. And we still have close calls. The city also saw the completion of the Magic Mountain I-5 interchange project this year, and this week in Santa Clarita was on hand the very day it opened to alert the community. Because this is the first time that Northbound offerings been open for through traffic going up to the theme park, and we had this offering closure for close to a year, so a little bit over a year, and you know, with the contractor help, uh, they got this offering done in the 19. 19 calendar days, and um, you know, here we are with, uh, you know, what a timing. Another infrastructure project underway in 2009 was the Safe Routes to School program. We went down to a site where construction was underway to find out more. I'm Evan Thomason with This Week in Santa Clarita, and right now I'm with Ian Perry, Senior Traffic Engineer for the City of Santa Clarita. Ian, we are in front of one of three projects the city is doing this summer uh, for safe routes to school. Can you describe what's going on? Yes, if you look behind us right now, uh, they are constructing what's called a bulb out, which is an extension of the sidewalk. Uh, what it does is it narrows the street down and provides three benefits for pedestrians. Uh, it slows the vehicles down. It provides a shorter crossing distance for pedestrians and narrows the street from 40 feet to 26 feet. Okay. And it also makes the pedestrians more visible to motorists when they're waiting to cross the street. And let's, let's backtrack just a little bit now. What is the Safe Routes to School program? Safe Routes to School program is a state and federal program that provides grant money to public agencies to install improvements around public schools to make an environment more conducive to walking and biking to school. It's a competitive process. We apply each year. This is the fourth year that, we have uh, that we've applied, and we've been successful four years in a row. Okay, and so this is basically to make it easier for children who walk to school to get there safely. That's correct. The city of Santa Clarita makes a point to invest in local youth and is always looking for new ways to engage community kids. Let's take a look at the Mayor for a Day program. Hi, I'm Christina McGoldrick with This Week in Santa Clarita. Right now we're here with three of our four contest winners who won the Mayor for a Day contest posted on MayorDude.com. They submitted their answers on what they would do if they were Mayor for a Day. Let's check in with them and see what it was like to walk in Mayor Ferry's shoes. Question was, what would you do if you were Mayor for a Day? And I said that I would have a peace rally with all the teenagers so we could just kind of discuss what would make the city better. And I'd also have cool bands come and we could hang out in maybe Central Park. So. That's a really good idea. Um, what did you... What was your favorite part of what you guys did today? My favorite part would have to be sitting on the meeting because it was pretty cool. Like I could voice my opinion and everyone was really nice. The city's transit division saw some exciting expansions and improvements this year. And this week in Santa Clarita, headed over to the transit maintenance facility to find out more. I'm Evan Thomason with This Week in Santa Clarita, and right now I'm joined with Brendy Heater from the city's transit division. Now, Brendy, we have a lot of exciting things going on in transit right now. Uh, one of the new features is we're going to be having expanded service to North Hollywood. Yes, we're very excited about the service. It starts on August 2nd, and it opens up um, a lot of new connectivity options for Santa Clarita riders. Um, you can connect to the orange line, red line, blue line, um, right from your home in Santa Clarita. 
Right, so this gives people a lot of better access to the whole LA region. Absolutely, and the one of the great benefits about it is that it's seven days a week, uh, very frequent service, and it opens up a lot of options for people to move around. And I know that the city has a new expanded uh, transit website with a brand new trip planner, so for more information they can certainly go there? Yes, and we're very happy with how it's turned out. We worked on it for about a year. We took um, uh, feedback from residents and we compiled it all into a new, very easy to use website, which is SantaClaritaTransit.com. And they're probably seeing that on their screen right now. We've got some other exciting things going on in the transit division. One of them is a brand new payment method. So we're going to climb aboard and take a look at that right now. Now, Brendy, right now we're standing in one of the Santa Clarita Transit buses, and we have a new feature here. Some commuters might have been used to seeing the coin box uh, payment method, and this is now replaced with the tap box. Right, and this is one of the uh, fare boxes right here, and the card actually just needs to be tapped on the fare box, and it knows you as a rider and knows exactly how much fare you should be deducted off of the card. So this will eliminate people having to carry loose change, but also in case they lose their card, uh, it's it's now replaceable. Right, and um, a huge um, huge benefit of the card is you can register the card online or by calling the one eight six six tap to go phone number. And if you lose it, you can uh, the card is canceled just like a debit card, and nobody else can use your card fraudulently. One of the city's biggest projects in 2009 was the Old Town New Hall Streetscape project. Let's take a look at the grand opening for Phase 1. Members of the City Council, City officials, and representatives from the Old Town New Hall Association expressed their excitement and appreciation for the new Streetscape project. We caught up with Robert Newman, Director of Public Works for the City, and asked him how the revitalization efforts will help to enhance Old Town New Hall. Oh, it's a great opening and hopefully everybody's enjoying themselves looking at what we've built here. It's been a great project. We've had a lot of great partners in the Adna Association. We had Spirit Construction. Edison was a real help. Uh, it's been a great project that we've delivered here. It's been great to work with the, the businesses along here and I think uh, everybody's well received. I know we did some streetscaping. There's some new plants around here. What were some of the aspects of this new project that are in place currently? You know, we've got the Western Walk of Stars. We've incorporated that back into pavers for the sidewalk. We put some real uh, boardwalk back in, so hopefully pull back in that Old West theme. Um, a lot of landscape material and uh, parking for, hopefully more parking for the businesses. This week in Santa Clarita covered another grand opening event this year, the expansion of Phase 4 of the city's sports complex. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Christina McGoldrick with This Week in Santa Clarita. We're now right here at the Sports Complex for the grand opening of Phase 4 expansion. We're here with Mayor Frank Ferry. How is this new expansion going to benefit the community? You know, it already adds to just a beautiful facility. Everyone that's been up here for the Aquatic Center, everyone's been up here for our existing uh, handball courts, our racquetball courts, our volleyball indoor gym. We just opened up this beautiful skateboard park with another active park space. But now we just opened up Canine Country, which is our second dog park here in Canyon, uh, Santa Clarita. One in Canyon Country, one in Central Park. And then right next to us, we have the pad that's there for a new gymnasium. And then we have a new sand uh, volleyball court that's going in, as well as a couple outdoor uh, basketball courts. So we just continue to make... Uh, the sports complex a great place for youth activities, adult activities, and for families to hang out on a weekend. It's definitely a testament to the Santa Clarita's commitment to community members and recreational endeavors. It is. There are no other cities in the state of California where they continue to grow and build out facilities. Right now you see uh, cities going bankrupt, you see cities laying off employees, and here we are, not only are we in the black financially, not only are we not laying off employees, but we're still adding amenities to this community. We're finishing the Cross Valley Connector, we're, we're building the library in downtown Newhall, and we're finishing off things that we said we're going to do, like the Canine Park and the fact that we're going to build a sand volleyball court and the basketball court. So the city of Santa Clarita continues just to be one of the best places to be and a model for other cities to follow. As you can see, it was a busy year for Santa Clarita, and we've seen a lot of people working hard on a wide variety of projects. Special thanks goes out to community members for tuning in and keeping Santa Clarita a great place to be. On behalf of everyone at This Week in Santa Clarita, we wish everyone the very best in the new year. Stay tuned to 2010 as we continue to bring you the latest and greatest in Santa Clarita news. For This Week in Santa Clarita, I'm Christina McGoldrick.
Ah. Hey, Mike, give me another one. The cost of one more drink, four fifty. The cost of a DUI, severe fines and loss of freedom, causing innocent loss of life, unimaginable. The value of acting responsibly? On second thought, why don't you call me a cab? Priceless. Drinking and driving are not worth the cost. Call a friend or taxi to get home safely.